Do you have solo economic dependency? That is, if you aren't working, you aren't making money. The Art of Passive Income Podcast is the solution. Discover passive income models so you can enjoy life on your own terms. Let freedom ring. Hey, it's Mark Riddles from the Landgeek, the Vivid and Achieve Real Estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's going to be a special podcast. We're actually going to mix it up a bit and provide all of you land geekers a taste of the best of the best segments of our roundtable podcast, which have been immensely popular. So sit back with a latte or an espresso or an Americano or some kind of caffeinated drink, maybe a cold group coffee like me, and enjoy the best of the best of our roundtable segments. We do have an important topic. Eric Peterson, what are we talking about? So today we're talking about Craigslist. Um, it comes up often, uh, especially for people just getting started in the business. Um, the conversation kind of goes something like this. You know, I, I tried Craigslist. I spent, you know, all this time creating these accounts, doing this, that, and the other thing. And everything was getting flagged. I gave it a couple of weeks and I just gave up. Now I'm just doing Facebook because that's working. Um, so that's, that's often the conversation that I have with people about Craigslist and um, which leads me to then tell them, um, you know, it was a struggle to, to learn it and get it all working. But once you get through that, um, I can tell you that most of my leads come from Craigslist and my sales. So there's a lot of value to it, but it's not an easy track to take. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bearland, Aaron, what's your sort of take on that? Well, um, first and full disclosure, I'll say that, you know, I'm definitely one who's struggled with Craigslist. So what I'm about to say isn't necessarily from a position of expertship, but I will say this, that, you know, um, Scott's gone through and gave us a methodology in posting domination and a lot of great tools to use. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the baseline for where you need to start, but it's not going to ensure success in your Craigslist posting and in your lead generation. There's a lot of other things that you need to do that Scott can't necessarily teach you because they're specific to your business, your voice, uh, the properties you're advertising, where those buyers are located in the country for your properties. And you have to kind of find that out for yourself. I mean, there's no uh, algorithm that's going to, provide that information for you. You know, um, you have to create your avatars and you have to decide who you're marketing to and that sort of thing. And all these things come combine into a, a, a large picture that when it uh, then comes together, you know, a lot of times through trial and error, um, a lot of times through, um, you know, definitely putting a plan together and working that plan to figure that out. But when they do come together, then it starts to happen, you know, and then you can see that, uh, that success that many people are hoping for, but there's not a magic bullet for it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Craigslist is inherently a struggle because they want you to be local. So if you live in Virginia and your properties in Colorado, then you've got to sort of work within, you know, the posting domination, you know, methodology to, you know, work within that Craigslist algorithm so that you look like you're local. And um, so you can get flagged and flagged or ghosted and all those things. And it's a pain. Um, Mimi Schmidt, what's your take on it? Well, I find that Craigslist really is great in my less saturated counties and all almost all my sale all my leads and all my sales come from it and then in the more saturated counties where it's harder to get leads you know like in some of my counties I can place three ads and get five leads from Craigslist in more saturated counties I'll place 10 ads and get one lead right so it's much harder and I rely much more on Facebook to get my leads in my sales in those counties. Um, so I think that where you are really matters with Craigslist. But I will say for me, 
my VA that I use for my posting, he's been doing this for three times as long as me, and he's a machine at it. He really is. We had an 85% stick rate in March. I was pretty proud of that. He did a great job, but he even likes Facebook better now. So it's I get so many leads on Facebook, I can't even keep up with them all. So I'm torn. I'm really torn. Um, so I'm really I'm looking forward to what everyone else has to say. Yeah, I mean, it is an interesting, um, you know, marketing issue where you can look at, well, okay, if this is where I'm getting my results, right, why don't I stick with that until it dries up instead of, you know, doing the shotgun approach of Craigslist, you know, or let's say Zillow or the lands, you know, we got to give Land Moto some love there because that's been you know really effective for people but is it really you know worth sort of saying or is there any merit to say hey this is too hard i'm only going to do these channels right scott todd what's your take okay well i got i got a lot of, a lot of uh thoughts on this for, first of all there's nothing wrong with focusing on what's working so if craigslist isn't working for you if you haven't mastered it no problem 90 10 okay like 90 10 whatever's working for you go in on it mark like you know if some if some channel's working great for you great there's nothing wrong with that you don't need to be everywhere in fact most people's sales come from that 90 10 split that's just the way that it is and you know if you're if you're all in on a platform let's say facebook and that's working for you no problem but 10% of your mark effort should be to, to be out looking at somewhere else, right? L looking because you never know when Facebook's going to dry up or whatever. The problem that people run into on Craigslist, there's two problems. Number one problem is what you mentioned, being local. Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, Craigslist is all about local. They want local people, dealing with local people, dealing with local properties. And the minute that you start um, you start posting from out of state, out of the area and all this other stuff, then from, from weaker kind of weaker IP addresses, they freak out. Okay. Because there's been a lot of platforms that have gone on to Craigslist and peeled stuff off there. Airbnb is a great example. Airbnb went out there and they, they basically, you know, uh, pillaged Craigslist and created this whole Airbnb business off of Craigslist traffic and it freaks them out. They don't like it. So they're, they're getting, and they always have been all about killing the spammers and the scammers. That's it. Like that's their, that's their deal. So if they even sense that you're, you're not local, if they sense that you're a spammer or a scammer or that you're trying to do something that's outside their guidelines, it's over, right? Like it, the, the ad is gone. So part one of that is really understanding how to be, how to be, and I refer to this guy all the time, Bob down the street selling a lawnmower. Bob, that's the, when I write my ads, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like Bob down the street trying to sell a lawnmower. Scott, does your neighbor, is your neighbor's name Bob and does he have a lawnmower? Uh, I don't know that there's a neighbor named Bob, but my okay. neighbor does have a lawnmower. So, okay. 50, 50. Now, the, the, other, the other component of that, so part one is the getting, getting past the filters and the spiders. And if you're able to do that, the next problem that people run into is they'll say, oh, I don't get anything. I don't get any responses. Okay, well, if you don't get responses, it doesn't matter what platform you're on. If you don't get responses, as long as there's traffic to it, if you don't get responses, it tells you something very clearly your message is not connecting with the people that are looking there. That's, that is it. Okay. Because as long as a website has traffic by its nature, there's going to be people that are interested in what you have to, to, to say. However, if your headline doesn't catch their attention, if your picture doesn't catch their attention, if what you say in the ad doesn't relate to them and leave them curious enough to raise their hand and go, then you're not going to get any response. And what I think happens a lot of times to people is that they are too anxious to make the sale right there from the ad. Okay. So they want to put this ad out there and they want someone to call them and go, I want to buy the property because you've told me everything about it. And the reality is, is that doesn't happen. The, the reality is, is that an ad, and I don't care what it's an ad for land 
or anything is never intended to sell you on it right there. Maybe an infomercial is intended to sell you, but a 30 second ad, a classified ad, anything is never intended to sell you on something. It's intended to get you to raise your hand to say, I'm interested. And then you need to sell them. So if you're putting ads out there and some people tell me like, I put hundreds of ads out there. I saw one guy in the Facebook group the other day say he puts a thousand ads a day. I, I, I don't even know why he would do that. But he, he literally said he puts a thousand ads a day out. And I'm like, but what are you getting for that? So you're not, there's no way that you're connecting with the, with people when you're just blanketing the whole thing and you're kind of making the the whole system not work properly because you don't I don't put out a thousand ads a day I don't put anywhere near that but yet I have a continued flow of leads coming in enough to support land moto because the ads that we run isn't just supporting my business we, we run ads for properties that are on land moto as well so that said people are finding properties. People are making sales on Land Moto. So if I can do it with less ads, you don't need hundreds of ads a day either. What you need to do is you need to get good at finding your voice so that you can connect with people. And yeah, I think what, that, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot to unpack there. There's right? a lot, right? There's a lot. I think the first piece of it might just be the marketing mindset. Right. And that being, hey, look, this is not to get a sale. Can I construct an effective ad? Number one, my headline has to be compelling enough that someone just even clicks on it, right? And then the number two, am I constructing an ad with images and information that is, again, compelling enough to get somebody to ask for more information, right? And then the, then the other question is, well, is that, once I've got that down, is Craigslist going to pay the dividends for me that Facebook is currently paying? If Facebook is easier to cut through and actually have your ad stick. So Eric Peterson, what's your take? Um, well, I think my take is that, um, you know, Craigslist is important to me. It works well in my business. Um, we do produce a lot of ad content and it's specifically for Craigslist. Um, but we've been, we've been looking at Facebook and experimenting with it. Uh, certainly, you know, you can, you can get leads there um, and, and you can sell property for sure. Um, however, for, for us, we, we just find it takes more an investment of time to, to manage the Facebook side compared to um, the Craigslist side. And, and honestly, that's, that's probably because I haven't built up a system around the Facebook side like I have on the Craigslist side. So if we're talking, you know, my 90-10 is, is 90 Craigslist and, and 10 Facebook, and, and Facebook is the area I'm exploring. But I, I see it in the community all the time. When people get started, they have a lot of success on Facebook. And I think um, it's because it's a little easier to, to get into and, um, and get out there and, and start connecting with potential buyers. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, if it's working, like we just said, you know, there's, there's value in that. But, um, but that's how it is in my business. And for your coaching clients, Eric, would you say that, you know, you can see a clear trend of people going into Facebook more than Craigslist or is it 50, 50? What do you see as a ratio? Um, generally, um, within my students, I think that a lot of them have most of their success on Facebook. Um, there are a few students that are working very diligently to build up their Craigslist side of the business. Um, but more often than not, uh, they're using Facebook and, and doing, you know, well enough with it for sure. I see that too. And I don't think it's the intention that they'll stay with Facebook. I think they start climbing that Craigslist mountain and they know it's going to be some work and they'll start on Facebook too to get some momentum. But the intention is to get there with Craigslist, right? So 
I have another question too. It's more about conversational trends, right? We talk about how the way to sell property is over the phone. Right? So phone conversation is the best for sure. Texting's great. And then in Facebook, I can have a conversation really easily with someone back and forth. It's like texting and messenger, right? So for me, it's harder with email to get folks engaged in, and conversing with me. It seems my, do you feel like that technology is becoming less popular or um, are there ways that you find or tried and true to get folks to engage in conversations with you on Facebook or on email? If I had a guess, I would say that the, the buyer on Craigslist is very different than the buyer on Facebook. In the sense that the Craigslist people are really searching for that land. And as a result, they don't need as much nurturing. They just need the warm and fuzzies in a sense that, oh, you're legitimate, right? They want to get some questions answered and they want to make sure they can afford it. They're a lot warmer as a lead, which is goes back to Eric's original point being it's a lot less work to work Craigslist. So if you're able to make that investment up front and go through posting domination and have that persistence, it's a really great long-term investment because your buyer is going to be a little bit better in that sense, right? So we're on Facebook, it's more... Um, I happen to see this. Tell me about I, it. I happen to see it. Tell me about it. A lot more tire kickers, a lot more conversations have to happen, a lot more warming up, right? Um, Bearland Aaron, do you see that as well? Yeah, I do. Because um, <clears throat> Facebook and Craigslist, there's kind of that time value equation um, that you have. There's a lot less um, ramp up time with Facebook. So it's easier to get into a um, little bit longer with Craigslist, but and the converse, there's also uh, Facebook is a lot, takes a lot more time to work every day um, compared to Craigslist. Once you get the Craigslist systems going. So maybe that could be like why a lot of the newer members um, steer towards the Facebook at first, because there's a lot to learn in this business. And, you know, if you can get into something that can produce some sales without as much time commitment while you're working on everything else, that can have its advantages. Um, one, one way to look at it too, is that like, we're a merchant and say we have a, a big store somewhere, but we go and uh, do farmer's markets, right? So Facebook is your farmer's market. You're catching people that are there. They're looking for stuff. You kind of catch them on a point of sale purchase. They may not have been looking specifically for land, but they liked what you had in the, and they bought it. Um, whereas Craigslist is more like doing the advertising, getting people to come to your store to see, and this is not necessarily our website, so to speak, but it could be. Um, but, but you're getting them to raise their hands so that uh, you can have the opportunity to build a relationship with them um, maybe over a longer period and sell them uh, in, in kind of a different way um, and maybe create a um, – it, it's kind of more just a long game. And if you're in this business, to be in this business, you definitely want to create that long game, but not to, not to discount the fact that those easier sales – have their own value on Facebook. So, you know, there's definitely a place for both and they're both, they both have their value. Um, and I want to reiterate something that Scott taught a long time ago um, that you got two kinds of wins. Um, you have a sale, which is obviously a win, but just getting somebody's email address, that's a win because there's a good chance that will result in a sale down the road. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a really strong point because at the end of the day, right? You don't own Facebook. You don't own Craigslist. They can change anytime. They can say, Hey, look, we're not going to work with people that are interested in raw land anymore. Right. Your keywords, raw land or land and investing or whatever it is, you know, 
we're not going to do it. Like you, you have no control of that. The one thing you do have control of though, is once you do get that lead, it doesn't matter which marketing platform it is, whether it's Landmodo or if it's Facebook or Craigslist, once they go into your email list, that's where you really have the control and can really start nurturing that prospect into somebody that will inevitably end up hopefully buying from you one day when you catch them at the right moment because they've already raised their hand and said, I'm interested in raw land. And then it's just a matter of just being persistent and showing up consistently with your offering and the right price, the right area, whatever it is, and they're going to buy. Um, Scott Todd, you want the final word on this? Um, <laughs> I wish there was just one word on it. The, the, thing, is, the thing is, is that um, – you, one, you, you have to go for, you have to go for what, what's giving you sales, right? I, I always say that the most important thing above everything else is sales. So it doesn't, I always say that like Sears, Sears who's almost bankrupt or is bankrupt, they don't have an expense problem. They have a revenue problem. They have a sales problem is what it, what it comes down to. And if you get sales from Facebook, so be it, go, go do it and, and do it and love it. However, I think that you've got to be, you've got to be trying on some other things because you got to be able to grow. You got to be able to kind of, you know, go other places. And what you said, Mark, right there is that when you're, when you're building your business, depending on Facebook, you're depending, you're depending on Facebook to, um, to continue to support those buy sell groups. And there's one thing that we know about all of these platforms and that is that they'll change the rules no matter what. So today they love the buy sell groups. And it favors it in the algorithm. It appears in people's news feed. Tomorrow they can change their algorithm and they can no longer support that and go on to their next whatever it is. I mean, I heard, um, I heard that they're trying to come out with a, a, a new tab in everybody's window called news feed where they get, you know, recognized news organizations to, to, to pay or they'll get paid if they put their news up there. So, you, you know, if that's the next big thing, you, you may stop seeing the buy sell groups. And then all of a sudden everybody's like, well, the buy sell groups went away. Your goal there should be to get as many email addresses as you can and add them to your list because you own that. You own it. Facebook could blow up tomorrow, but you own the email addresses in your system. You can always go back to them. You build that buyer's list. So, I'd rather forego a sale today to get the email address because then I know I can market to that person forever and ever and ever. Yeah, and, and if you have any privacy concerns whatsoever, you want Facebook to blow up today. <laughs> like, like literally like <laughs> you're praying the techno gods, please let Facebook blow up today so that, you know, privacy can come back. So, People are always asking Mimi, what is the best practices to put up an ad on Facebook? Mimi, what's the best practices? Far and wide, advertise far and wide. You know, a lot of these um, properties that we buy are in very rural, rural, small town places. So if you post your ad there, on marketplace there, you're not going to get You'll get some responses, but it's, it's a big world out there. The, the point is to get the word out a lot of different places, and you'll learn from doing that where your land is, has, there's a demand for it, right? And then you can double down on those areas and still continue to. I mean, I've sold a property 45 minutes south of me here in D.C. for out in Costilla. Right, so there are people all over the United States that want land and where we're selling it, not just where the land is. Yeah, but Mimi, like you know, Scott Todd will teach put up a blind ad on Craigslist. So Scott, can you just kind of define for everybody what a blind ad is? Yeah. Okay. So basically, when I say when I say uh, put up a blind ad, it's oftentimes because you don't have a, a specific property that you're selling. Maybe you're you're new. You're trying to get you know names on your buyers list. Maybe you're just kind of testing the market. A blind ad is basically an ad that says, hey, five acres in this area, you, you kind of talk about a hypothetical property. It doesn't necessarily mean that you, you own it. You're not listing the property number, AP number, everything. You're just saying, hey, five acres in this area, maybe put a price down, $500 down or $100 down. 
uh, this amount per month. And it's a very generic kind of a thing. And really what a blind dad does is if you imagine, like imagine walking over to a tree and like shaking the tree and all the coconuts come falling off, right? You're, sh you're, you're, you're literally shaking the tree and getting the coconuts that sounds to gather dangerous. the email addresses. Maybe I shouldn't call customers coconuts, but whatever. That you're really getting those email really addresses not. of people who are interested in that type of a property. So that's what a blind dad is. Okay, so let's go around the, the round table and let's ask them about the effectiveness. Have they put out blind ads on Facebook within groups and marketplace? FBQ, we'll start with you. Blind ads are great for Craigslist, but not for Facebook. And um, Facebook, people can get an idea of who you are through your feed and they're, they're savvy, right? They're going to look at that ad and they want to see the property. They want to know that you're for real and that the property is for real. You have to be specific. You have to provide pictures of the property, APNs, all of that. And uh, it's hard enough for us to build credibility. So I think it just, it makes it harder when you have a general ad. So be specific. Uh, I, you know, we've had, we've debated this. I, I do much better, better with a long ad, even if people re-ask the questions on information you've already given in the ad. Um, in addition to having a long ad and being specific about the land, your profile, it's important that it be a, a profile, a real profile. People are very savvy. They'll notice if it's just a profile that you threw up that has two weeks worth of history in it and one picture, right? Um, you're going to have to, you have to do better than that. Right. So that's my two cents. All right. Technician, Rick Peterson, what about you? Yeah. So <clears throat> I kind of agree with Mimi there. I, I'm pretty wary about using a general or blind ad on Facebook. Um, just because of that, because, you know, people, they tend to want to check out the property, make sure you own it, all that kind of stuff. So you really got to be careful. But one thing, one way I like to get around that is if I've had property in that area already and maybe I've sold it, to advertise that property. And then when they contact me, I can tell them that one's sold and hey, I've got more coming or something like that. Um, I find that's a little bit more of a legitimate way to get away with a somewhat blind ad on Facebook. Mimi, what do you think? Completely agree. I've had ads that are a month old that people have responded to, right? Property gone. It's, it works perfect. All right. The, the Nightcap Meister, the OG. How are, you, how are you putting your ads up on Facebook? So I would, I would agree. I don't do blind ads on Facebook. Uh, I have also noticed on Facebook that you do need to be very specific, but you need to do it in a simple way because I think people just don't have an attention span these days anywhere to read an ad five paragraphs long on Facebook. Uh, the other thing I found on Facebook is uh, on multiple attempts, I have listed multiple properties in Facebook. I almost get no leads from those ads. So it seems like the more combobulated the ad is, the more complex it is. Uh, the less the less leads I get, and the more specific I am talking about one property specifically with some really nice pictures. And I think pictures do all the difference on Facebook as well. Um, I get better leads from. So that that's what I notice uh, in, in with my experience. You know what I noticed? Scott Bossman has a wealth of knowledge, and if you want to tap in to that knowledge, schedule a call with him or the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Today's podcast is sponsored by scheduling a call with Mike or Scott. That's it. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. They can, you know, basically diagnose where you're at in your process. It should be start with the toolkit, which by the way, we now have the guarantee to rule all guarantees. We guarantee if you just execute on the toolkit that it won't cost you anything. So if you work that, that program, for six months and you don't at least make back your investment, we'll refund you. It's that simple. Plus there's flight school. Maybe you want to get all done in three days. Flight school live. Maybe you're just ready to just start climbing up the mountain 
with one of the Sherpas, Mimi, Eric, Tate. Do it. Look at one-on-one coaching. But you won't know what's best for you until you get on a call. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and get to listen to Scott Bossman's and Mike Zano's mellifluous voices. How about that? <laughs> Barry Land Aaron. That was, that, was, that was a word. I like it. That's right. That's right. That's, uh, I think there's a word for it. It's, it's called uh, sepquadilius or sepquadillion, which means somebody that loves big words. Huh, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> who knew? Very lame. You must have like word of the day toilet paper or something like that. It's all over the house. <laughs> my, my kids have a tremendous vocabulary. And if SAT, they don't. SAT prep going on over there, it sounds like. Absolutely. Mm. On my kids, I'm feeling a bit lugubrious because I'm not enjoying your studying bits. <laughs> so, Bearland Aaron, let's get back on track. Um, how are you marketing on Facebook? Um, pretty much the same as everybody else. Um, I got maybe a medium to long ad going now. Uh, contrary to my previous arguments with Mimi, I think I've come over to her side. <laughs> um, really specific about the property, pictures of the property. Um, sometimes I will use like a generic marketing picture uh, to create some, like a, an image of what you can do on the property, but I still also include actual pictures of the property and Google Earth stuff, um, those kind of things. So it's all really specific to one property. I have never really done a, um, a fully blind ad. I've done some things where um, I may have advertised like three or four properties um, in a specific area, like, hey, I've got several properties available in this town or whatever. Um, contact me for more details, and those don't really work much. You know, people want to see the specifics, you know. Um, I'm finding the same thing as everybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Big Papa, my dog, Tate Litchfield. What's your take? You know, I, I kind of echo what's already been repeated. Um, blind ads on Facebook cause a lot of confusion and a lot of, uh, I don't know, upset inquiries, I guess. More people want specifics. So give them those specifics. Get, get very detailed ads out there. Uh, not, it's not like that's going to cause somebody to read it or not. It's just going to give them a better idea of what they're actually contacting you about, if it's the right size or the right location. And so I try to be specific on Facebook. Uh, Craigslist, that's a whole different ball game. You know, go vague, blind ads, try everything. I think the moral of this conversation is just do it right? Just post ads, just post ads on Facebook, just post ads on, on marketplace, buy sell groups, uh, Craigslist, Landmoto. I mean, you're not going to know what works unless you try everything. So you've got to be everywhere when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Being everywhere. So Scott Todd, if I'm going to be everywhere, how am I going to execute on that? Well, I think that what you have to do is you, you got to, you got to realize that like, first, you don't know where, where your buyer is going to come from. And so if you're getting very selective and being like, well, I'm only going to be on Craigslist. Well, then that might take you a little bit longer because you don't know if the particular per person for this uh, property, the specific, uh, the specific buyer for this property is going to come from Craigslist, Facebook, and Moto. You don't know where it's going to come from. So I think that what you, you need to do is you need to have, you need to come up with a strategy, a posting strategy. So like, you know, my posting strategy basically says, okay, we're going to post this type of an ad on, on uh, Craigslist. And I like, I like blind ads on Craigslist. I, I like those types of ads because what it's doing is it's, it's shaking the trees. Like I talked about then on Facebook, I'm not doing a blind ad. So on Facebook, I'm doing a, a different type of an ad like a Mimi might, might teach you, okay? So like you're, now you're dealing with an ad that's more specific to that particular property. But even then, you need to have a posting schedule because, you know, if you just go out on your own and say, well, I'm just going to post these whenever I feel like it, well, then you're, you're not going to be, you're, you're not going to have that rhythm and you need to generate some system that's going to give you a rhythm, you know, 
okay, I'm going to post the properties on Landmoto when I get them. So boom, that's part of my posting strategy. I'm going to market on, on Facebook on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I'm going to post, you know, these properties. I'm going to hit this area. And, and Mimi talks about, I know she talked about it at, her, at the last boot camp, for example. She talked about her, her pattern of like, okay, I'm going to post the cities that start with, you know, A through uh, E. Or I'm going to post East Coast to, to West Coast type of a, a deal. So she doesn't uh, inundate them. And she has a very logical plan of executing it. And then she executes that plan. So I think it takes some time to sit down and to say, listen, I know one of the things I need to do is every day I need to market. So what does that mean? It means every day I need to show up to the marketing table and I need to be doing something. So if you just show up and go, well, okay, it's time to do marketing. I don't know what to do now. So let me just wing it. Well, that's not going to work. There should be a day planned for your deal of the week. That's your message out to your, uh, to your team or to your uh, buyers. For me, my deal of the week goes out on Sunday. Boom. This is what we do on Sundays. Everybody knows it. That's what we do. Um, you know, on these days, we're going to post on Craigslist. Like every day, we're going to post on Craigslist. When we get properties, new properties, we're going to put them on, on Landmoto. If we see that a property is not performing well on Landmoto, like we're not getting the responses that we want, we're looking at the view count, we're not seeing the responses, guess what? On Thursdays, we're taking those down and we're going to repost them a couple of them. So we're going to kind of like change it up a little bit. We're going to rewrite our ads. And then on these days, we're going to post in these platforms. Um, and I think that when you do that, all of a sudden you have a plan. And, you know, like Mark, I always say that probably the, the greatest marketer I know of is you. And it's not that you're, I mean, I think you're a great marketer. I don't mean to minimize it. What I'm about to say that like you're a great marketer, but but the one thing that you do that makes you a great marketer is you're consistent. Every Tuesday, this podcast comes out. Every Thursday, the next podcast comes out. Every Thursday, your review digest comes out. You show up consistently in the different places on a regular basis, and you're there, you're present, and you're participating into the marketplace. I will accept the compliment. Thank you. <laughs> and it's not a backhanded one either. You're great, it's but... Not no, no. I mean, if anyone's going to give me a backhanded compliment, it's going to be Eric. And we'll wait for that. Because, you know, at boot camp, I'll always ask people, like, do you think that I email too much? And, and, you know, oftentimes, hands will go up. And I say, good. That's right. So, in, you know, in relationships, you always think, well, familiarity breeds contempt. But in marketing, familiarity breeds contempt trust because ultimately you trust that I will consistently show up. Now it's up. It's my responsibility to make sure that when I do show up, there's something of value that wants you to you know, hopefully open up that email that's on me. So if it can't just be a bunch of just junk, that being said, I am showing up consistently with enough value that I'll, I know that, you know, people are going to trust that, you know, what I'm putting out there is good enough. And so ultimately with your ads, you just got to be consistent. You got to put out more ads than you think you need. Uh, we talk about this a lot at, at, at bootcamp. You don't need to be a billion dollar company with your marketing, but you need to have a Geico mindset, right? They show up every day, 20 times a day, 15 minutes or more could save you. And we all, all can answer that question because they're consistently showing up. Are there too many ads for Geico? I don't think so. I love their ads. That's why you've got to show up every day. That's, that's the, uh, I think the consistency is the key. And again, Geico is not just marketing on one channel. They're on every single channel. Just like what Tate said, you should be marketing on every effective channel, Facebook, Craigslist, Landmoto. Those are your big three. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgate.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.